Hi, welcome back. Professor Schimmel again, part seven of the virology series of lectures. Uh, next, and we're continuing our RNA virus survey. Uh, next on your outline should be Paramyxoviridae family. Um, a couple of examples in this family that I want to talk about in uh, one in quite a bit of detail. First of all, in this group is a group of um, four viruses. Uh, known as uh, parainfluenza viruses, and they cause a condition similar to the flu. It's not technically the flu. Um, the symptoms tend to be more cold-like, uh, meaning maybe not so much uh, as far as body ache goes and uh, not a, um, a, a, an extremely high fever like we see sometimes in the flu. Um, now, these infections, like I said, are usually cold. We're usually going to see cold-like symptoms, but as is usually true, these can be serious in uh, immunocompromised individuals. Okay, also in this group, we have the variety of measles that we call rubiola. And you've got some bullets that you need to fill in in your outline, so let's talk about that. Uh, this is a highly contagious uh, disease spread by respiratory secretions. As is true with many, but, but not all viral infections, the patient is uh, most contagious a few days prior to the beginning, to the onset of symptoms. Humans are the only reservoir of this particular virus. Now, a little bit of history. In uh, 1973, uh, health officials in the United States introduced a new vaccine um, for rubiola into use in the general population, and it was pretty successful. Um, prior to the introduction of that vaccine, there were about uh, 400,000 cases a year. This is in the U.S., and after the population was vaccinated, it dropped to about 1,500 cases a year. Not bad, right? But by the mid 80s, measles was once again on the uprise. Couple of reasons for that. One, uh, the vaccine that they were using at that time was about 95% um, effective, which is pretty good, but it means not complete coverage. And there is no vaccine that gives 100% immunity. Um, and the other reason was that not everybody got vaccinated. Just like we saw with smallpox, um, everybody has to get vaccinated in order for a vaccine campaign to truly be effective. And that's what happened with smallpox. I mean, the healthcare officials around the world went to great pains to make sure that every human being on planet Earth got vaccinated for smallpox. Maybe we could learn some lessons from our history. Um, so in the mid 80s, measles was once again on the uprise. New generation vaccine was introduced and um, we had a grip on measles again, but now we're seeing uh, near epidemic numbers of measles cases as many individuals choose not to vaccinate their children. Uh, the vaccine that we use for this is the MMR that gives coverage for measles, mumps, and rubella, which is another type of measles that I will uh, talk about a little bit later on. All right, a little detail about rubiola. Um, incubation, approximately 11 to 14 days, and then we're going to see cold-like symptoms in our patient. That's going to include um, cough, sore throat, and a headache. Uh, we're probably going to see a body rash. I think you've got some photos of this in your outline. Yeah, they're not great, so you might Google it or look in your um, textbook. That's a really great textbook. Um, and the rash can also occur in the oral cavity, and there's a photo of that. When that occurs, it's referred to as coplic spots, and it's really characteristic of this disease. Uh, most especially dangerous in infants and the elderly, right, generally true. And we see um, approximately one in 2,000 infections will progress to encephalitis, um, brain infection, and about one in 3,000 cases are fatal. That's usually unimmunized infants. Those are not good odds, people. Um, you look at any figures that talk about adverse, possible adverse uh, results of vaccination, and uh, they are a whole lot different than that, one in perhaps millions uh, or larger. Um, okay, so let's immunize and prevent this. I think this is one of the diseases that we could truly eradicate from the human population. All right, um, we're still in the same family. Let's talk a little bit about mumps. The uh, virus causing mumps infects the salivary glands, causing them to become painfully swollen. Uh, the incubation period ranges from 16 to 18 days, and we're also going to see a fever, a headache, and general malaise. Uh, now, when this occurs in children, it's 
usually not a serious disease, uh, but when it occurs in males, 14 to 17 years of age, where am I on that? Um, and, and also older adult males, um, if they become infected at that age, it can result in uh, inflammation of the testes. That usually occurs four to seven days after the onset of symptoms. And this can result in subfertility or permanent um, infertility in, in that male. So um, again, uh, if you're thinking children someday, uh, or grandchildren, I should say someday, you might want to vaccinate uh, your kids. All right, then next on your outline should be uh, the Orthomixaviridae family. And in this group, we have um, the viruses that cause influenza or the flu. And we've got strains A, B, and C, um, a lot of sub strains underneath those categories. Uh, let me just see, my notes are kind of mixed up here. Um, all right, transmission, respiratory secretions, um, and one of the um, common complications of the flu is that um, it commonly progresses to bacterial pneumonia. So what happens is, is that the patient is sick, their immune system is uh, pretty busy trying to deal with the influenza, and normal bacterial flora, uh, because homeostasis has been disrupted, can gain a foothold and uh, cause bacterial pneumonia, and this in itself may be life-threatening. Uh, the um, individual with the flu is going to be contagious um, for about a day before symptoms begin until about seven days after symptoms begin. So you've got an over a week period uh, where that individual is highly contagious and then they're going to taper off um, after that. Incubation, one to four days, characterized by an abrupt onset of symptoms. Uh, we're gonna see fever, headache, cough, sore throat, uh, body aches, and um, complications, again, are most common in infants and in the elderly. Uh, now, you've got a list of influenza viruses A and B and C. I'm not going to uh, ask you to be responsible for all of those different strains, just you need to know um, A, B, and C varieties. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to tell you about that? Oh, um, how about this? Let's vaccinate um, against the flu. And honestly, I have to admit, I have not been as good as I should be about being vaccinated for the flu. Uh, there are some issues that uh, people kind of throw up as excuses not to get it. Really, I, I don't have an excuse and I'll get one this year, promise. Um, you can ask me about that. But anyways, it, uh, some of the excuses are, and it's because I, I think partially it's just generalized fear uh, due to a lack of information or perhaps um, an ability to understand that information. That statement is not meant to be insulting. I'm just saying that if you have a background in the sciences, uh, biology especially, I think it's sometimes a little easier to get your head around these things. Um, I know my education has served me well for that. But some of the things about the flu vaccine, um, there's a new one every year because, and it, and it usually covers um, several strains um, of the flu virus. And uh, the reason there's a new one every year is because these are viruses, and this is true of many RNA viruses, that mutate quite rapidly. And so the vaccine that we used last year is not going to be effective on the strains of the virus that we're going to be dealing with this year. Um, and Flu vaccine, you can't just whip up a batch, you know, in a couple of weeks. It takes months to prepare flu vaccine. And so um, the people that are doing this, uh, the experts that are doing this, they are having to make their best guess as to what strains of the virus are going to be significant next year, right? And so coverage may only be 60% or so, but if everybody gets vaccinated, then the few people that can't be vaccinated for valid reasons, they're going to be safe, called herd immunity or community immunity. And we'll be talking about that numerous times uh, this semester. So get vaccinated for the flu. All right, let's move on to the Toga Viridae family, um, single-stranded RNA viruses with an envelope, uh, rubiola, I'm sorry, uh, rubella, uh, also known as German measles is um, uh, the one that I want to talk about here. So that is rubella. 
Um, all right, I'm just looking to see what you have. And it looks like I gave most of you this information in your outline. So let's just kind of go over it together. Uh, generally milder than uh, rubiola. Uh, infected individuals may even be asymptomatic. Airborne transmission, respiratory secretions, two to three week incubation. Um, if symptoms are present, we might see a little bit of a rash and um, temperature elevated a couple of degrees. Complications are less common. Uh, encephalitis in about one in 6,000 cases. Now here's where this viral infection becomes quite significant, and that is a, um, a condition called congenital rubella syndrome. All right, now if a non-immune woman, meaning she hasn't had the disease, she hasn't been vaccinated, or her antibody titer levels have fallen below a critical point, um, and she is infected with the virus while she's pregnant, virus crosses the placental barrier, infects the fetus. This is um, a, a really tragic situation. Now, I've got some figures in your notes uh, that tell you, uh, uh, give you an idea of possible outcomes. It says that uh, if the infection occurs um, zero to 23 days before conception, there's a 43% chance of fetal infection. Uh, zero to 12 weeks after conception, 51% chance of fetal infection and um, 13 to 26 weeks into the pregnancy, we have a 23% chance of fetal infection. I'm not really liking those odds. I don't know about you guys. Now, um, let's talk about what damage to the fetus might entail in these maternal infections. Uh, we've got things like deafness, eye defects, especially cataracts, uh, congenital heart disease, developmental delays, mental retardation, uh, microcephaly, that means um, a, a tiny, small head, and um, autism is a, a possible outcome as well. So women of childbearing age, uh, if you are thinking about getting pregnant, go see your doctor, simple tests they can do to determine your level of immunity, your antibody titer level uh, to this virus. If that level is um, low, they will revaccinate you, and obviously you want to do this um, before you get pregnant. This is preventable, people. We need to vaccinate our children and ourselves. All right, I'm going to break here, and when I pick up uh, segment eight, we'll talk about um, rhabdoviridae. This is one of my favorite. It's pretty interesting, which is uh, the virus that causes rabies. All right, guys, thanks for watching.